We're now joined by Brenda Hopper, who is a founder and owner of Cannaboy Treehouse and the former state director of New Jersey Small Business Development Centers. Brenda, it's been too long. Good to see you. Yes, it's good to see you. So you have gotten into the marijuana business. I know, I know. But that was my son that uh, said, Ma, you got to do this. So I did it. <laughs> okay. Describe. First of all, what, what was his rationale as to why you should do this? Well, first of all, he's in criminal justice. And he said, Ma, this new industry is going to blow up. You're retiring from the state directorship. Let's see if we can do something with um, the cannabis business. Now, mind you, we have a CBD store in Union in 2019. So it was a natural progression. Question. You said 2019 uh, with the CBD store, right? Mm -hmm. COVID's impact on the cannabis industry from your perspective? I think that people are in tune to cannabis now more than ever. Uh, what I've noticed since it was approved by the governor and uh, New Jersey, that suddenly our CBD business wasn't as popular. People came in for the real thing, which prompted us to apply for a, a retail license. How challenging to get that license? Oh, God. It really? continues. It continues and to th be. This is for someone who knows the system. So go ahead, Brenda. Yes, absolutely. And it is horrendous. I mean, you have to deal with the New Jersey CRC, which is fine, and they take their- Is that their the, the cannabis regulatory folks? That's correct, the Go cannabis ahead, regulatory folks. So you apply and you wait and wait, and finally you get approval for a conditional license. So we have a conditional license. However, you have to have the municipality approve you, and that's another long process with the planning board, with traffic studies, with- uh, make sure the children don't think this is a tree house versus a cannabis shop. I mean, we had three or four uh, board meetings with the township of South Orange, and we're still waiting on the final approval for permit. Are feds involved as well? Is the federal government involved as well? No, no. This is strictly the municipalities and the Cannabis Regulatory Commission. So, so Brenda, it's challenging for anyone to get into this industry, but is it even more challenging for people of color, specifically women of color? Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, uh, the CRC says, okay, they want to give minorities and women a uh, shot at this. What they don't tell you is how expensive it is. How expensive it, are we talking? Oh, no, very expensive. I took a shot at it and used my pension oh. to actually get into this business. Uh, when I tried to get a location on Route 22 West, uh, either the landlord did not want cannabis or the rents tripled than what they were. So I had to end up buying a building. I bought a commercial property in South Orange and I tapped my pension to buy a building. And now we... We're paying for planning board meetings. We're paying for architectural drawings. We're paying for lawyers. We're paying for, it's just crazy. It is so expensive. If you knew then what you know now. Yeah. Yeah, seriously, Brenda, would you, have, would you have done it? I have to think about that because I had a very nice pension and I could have just retired and traveled all over the world. But no, um, after six months of retiring and COVID, I was getting very antsy. So it was, okay, let's do this. And I'm all in it now at this point and waiting to open. And hopefully we can compete with the franchises that are coming into the state so that we have a, a real shot at this. Whoa, 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 hold on. Franchise, what, what are we talking here? Uh, the major franchises from other states uh, that come into New Jersey and they have the deep pockets. They have, they know the system. They know how to set up everything. So we are also competing with that group. So, so, I'm, so you're saying 
again, a small business issue, which is uh, obviously this is what you did for years um, yes. as the leader, as the uh, state director of New Jersey Small Business Development Centers. You understand this better than most, but you, you're saying that that there are different kinds of cannabis operators and owners, and small business cannabis operators and owners are challenged in many of the same ways small business owners, regardless of your business. Plus, it's more challenging because it's a new industry, right? Absolutely. That's it. You hit the nail on the head. It is so challenging. And like I said, you have to have deep pockets and you have to have the fortitude to uh, really continue with this business. And is like this a family business? I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting, but this yes. is a family business? Yes. My Who's son, in Who's in uh, Lindsay, my son, Lindsay Lofton, and my two granddaughters, Tatiana Lofton and Sasha Lofton. So it's a family business, small family owned business. What's that like? <laughs> well, they do all the work. <laughs> I do all I do all the political things and uh, writing for grants and trying to get funding for this business because um, I'm good at that part. Uh, Lindsay and Tatiana know CBD. They know cannabis. So they are really experts at it. And who's the market? Who's the market? What is the market? Well, initially we thought it was uh, just the medical marijuana. But you had this underground of people that smoked weed. They smoked and they would buy it on the corners or they would buy it underground. So now that market is now uh, coming up to buying it legally and not getting in trouble for having it. We still have people coming to our union store asking, can we get cannabis yet? Can we get cannabis yet? And that's when I said, we're still opening up in South Orange. So yeah, there is a market for it. Real quick on, on this. Are there, because there are edibles. I, I, I'm not as informed as I should be here. There are edibles and then it, there are different forms, right? There's all kinds of product. Edibles, you have uh, tinctures, you have capsules, you have the flower itself. Um, it's makeup. They even have uh, cannabis in makeup products. We sell CBD products to pets to calm the anxiety, to all kinds of things. So there's a huge market, and we, we certainly hope that we're successful in it. Well, Brenda, we wish you and your family um all the best. And many, many times you've joined us in the past talking about other people's yes, business. Yes. This is your business with your family. This is Brenda Hopper, who's the founder and owner of Canna Boy Treehouse and the former state director of New Jersey Small Business Development Centers. Uh, Brenda, thank you so much. We appreciate it. As always, thank you, Steve. And you do look good. Thank you, Brenda. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Hackensack Meridian Health, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, Valley Bank, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Choose New Jersey, PSC, Veolia, and by IBEW Local 102. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ. Life is full of changes. At Hackensack Meridian Medical Group, we're ready for them. If you have a cold or chronic illness, our five-star doctors can treat any ailment. Whether you're starting recess or retirement, we're prepared with pediatric and adult specialists. And if you just moved here, we are in your neighborhood. You now have access to a health team thousand strong. So no matter what or when, we're ready.